Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, and welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. Beautiful people, today I am speaking with Dee Wallace, and we're going to be talking about creation, manifestation, and ways that you haven't heard before, and also aliens and how somehow they all relate. Dare to Dream won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards, won the COVR Award for Best Radio Podcast Show, Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. If you're on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, go to membership and sign up. There's some amazing gifts you're going to be receiving there, plus private time with me and my guests. Uh, my Gaia TV show, my interview with George Nori has been released on his show called Beyond Belief. So if you have a subscription to Gaia TV, please check out my episode where we talk about shamanism and extraterrestrials. And if you don't have a Gaia TV subscription, I'm going to put something in the show note links that is a free 14-day trial. So not only can you check out my show and my episode, I should be very clear. It's not my show. It's Georgia's show. I'm just interviewed on it. However, you can check out a lot of the other material and Gaia TV is our platform. It's amazing. I'm about to roll out a five-week energy healing program. It's based on shamanism where you show up every week and receive a one our healing in a group setting. Also, that link is going to be in the show notes. If you're interested, you can go to debbie-shinger.com and click on the shaman program link. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. I'm also speaking in two places coming up. Well, many places, but I'm going to name two. One is in Glastonbury, UK, Portals to Ascension. It's going to be amazing, sacred land. And the other is the galactic cruise to the Yucatan. I am one of the many amazing presenters. I can't wait to hear them. And there's lots of land excursions to sacred places, and you get access to all the presentations. That's also going to be in the notes, galacticoriginscruise.org. And um, I'll put it in the notes so it's so much easier there. Again, I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a media visibility specialist. I'm a book writing coach, and I help you write a page-turning book. Additionally, I take books to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And finally, I run a boutique agency where I do publicity PR work for spiritual messengers, always only a handful, and I get folks booked on podcasts. So I've got a gift for you, and you can go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. And there you will find all the templates and videos how to do this yourself and get way more visibility. So today's a big day. We've got Dee Wallace here. She is an internationally known actress, best known for her role as the mother in Steven Spielberg's film, E.T. She's appeared on every major network and talk show, including Oprah and the Today Show. Dee Wallace earned her teaching credentials from the University of Kansas, the principles she found empowering for children. And her work is based on the principles of accepting responsibility and loving ourselves early in life to create the life we desire. Dee is a strong advocate for accepting our own magnificence and power in a positive, wonderful way way. She has authored six books on the subject of self-creation entitled Conscious Creation, The Big E, Bright Light, Getting Stuff, and Wake Up Now, plus her latest book, Born, a Complete Manifestation Primer, which is available now. She does live call-in internet radio show each week, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And she also offers monthly webinars on a variety of creation subjects, plus conducts private sessions from her home in California. And if you would like to learn more about D. Wallace, go to IamDWallace.com. 
And with that, I welcome Dee <laughs> Wallace to the Dare to Dream show. It is so great to have you. It is so great to be here. I am very busy to myself. <laughs> I can when you relate. Read all that out, I went, oh my gosh, I really am doing all that. <laughs> yeah, you have a big mission. You have a really big mission because, I mean, the one hand, you're this creative artist, you're still acting, which I love. Yeah. And you're still churning out amazing work. But on the other hand, you're this deeply spiritual person. And how is that for you to marry? Can you bring the spiritual being to the set while you're acting or the stage? Oh, I, I think you have to. I don't think you ever leave who you are. And the more you love and trust who you are and share that with the world, the more authentic the world understands you. I can imagine that while you're performing and you are in rehearsals, being fully spiritual and being D Wallace, that you meet fellow actors who must really appreciate it. Either they can vibe with you or you may turn them on to information they hadn't heard before. Yeah, I think every actor, Debbie, is looking for the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a, a director asks me to do something that doesn't resonate truthful to me slash the character, mm -hmm. it's kind of like bugs crawling all over me. And what's interesting is that I learned how to channel in my acting first. And then when my channel reopened, because I used to do it a lot when I was a little girl, didn't know what it was, but, but when my channel reopened, I went, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I do in my acting. I never break a script down. I never figure things out. Uh, I never decide how I'm going to play something before I'm in the moment. Um, a great story about that is the dinner table scene in E.T. And um, at the end, you know, he, I said, well, why don't you tell your father about it? And he says, I can't. He's in Mexico with Sally. And at that moment, I felt all these tears coming up. And Mary thought, oh, I can't let the kids see me cry. So she excused her, herself and left, which was not in the script. So Stephen came over to me and he said, Dee, why did you get up and leave? Not in the script. And I explained to him what happened. And he looked at me and he turned and said to the crew, you've got a half an hour, build me a wall in the kitchen here with a sink with running water so that he could take me over to the sink and bring me back into that close up where I say he hates Mexico. Then here come the tears. So, you know, the beauty of that, that doesn't happen if you don't trust yourself. And if you have a director that has not given you permission to have that freedom. Absolutely. And that's really where the magic happens in life and in the movies. Yeah. Because. Clearly, Steven Spielberg felt truth when you did that. Like you took the scripts way further into this incredible reality of this woman, this mother. And that is a very meaningful story for me to hear. And also for me to understand your process, which I've never heard before. I was a professional actress from the time I was little until well into my adulthood. And it was 17 years ago when I had a huge experience that I couldn't, it was inexplicable. Now I know today, looking back, it was perfect. It was meant to get me where I am today, but it was very confusing. All I'd known is yeah. I'm an actress, I'm a singer, end of story. And so when this, the reason I knew something was wrong was I was getting roles and not wanting to break down the character. 
I wasn't even wanting to memorize lines. That's another story. That's not good. But yeah, that was, those you do have to have down, Debbie. <laughs> but you know, I didn't have the language back then for what you're saying. Yeah. And this is really genius. Like it's very meaningful for me to hear you say you channel the character. You literally Absolutely. let this other energy come through and inform you, guide yes. you. Yes. Now, that being said, I want to be very clear that in all creation process, mm -hmm. you have to be clear about <laughs> what your intention and choice is. The, the first rule of manifestation is you've got to know what you want. And very few of us, we kind of have an idea. We kind of have a feeling, but I, I literally can have somebody come on stage and go, okay, what do you want? I don't want to have to worry about money. Good. What do you want? Oh, I, I don't want to be afraid that I don't have enough money. Good. What do you want? This can go on for 20 minutes until they get so pissed off at me. They go, I want more money. And I go, good. That's the first time you told me what you want. So it's like taking a kid to see Santa Claus. You know, what do you want, little girl? I want a toy. We don't know what to bring you. Yeah. We don't know what to get at the store for you. We don't know how to fulfill your wish. Mm. I want a doll that that cries and says, mama, and wears a dress. Now I kind of know what you want. Yeah. You know, but that goes back to a lot of religious training where we were all taught you shouldn't ever ask for what you want. And you sure as heck shouldn't ask for everything you want. Yeah. And the fact that you acquiesce to God to guide you, right? Yeah. And, when, and God said, I want to give you all the desires of your heart. Yeah. I love that. Not if you're a good little girl, not if you're humble, not if you're poor. That was my family. Man, after I did ET, yeah. I pulled way back into myself and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I remembered my grandmother, who was a very powerful force in my life mm. who said they're the rich people we're the good people oh well how many of us were taught that and god never said anything like that ever never. man has taken god's word mm. and made it limiting and controlling. Yeah. Wow. So your new book, Born, very exciting. You're a prolific writer here. It does talk about the power of self-creation. So yeah. because of what you're saying, I'm segueing into this because the operative word is self, right? It is not other yeah. creation. It is self-creation. How, um, we'll go deeper into this, but just to get us started, how does one easily manifest or create their desires into creation, into being? Give it to you in five minutes. And it doesn't matter what you want to create. Yeah. The formula is the same. Specifically, what do you want? Second, I'm committed to creating that. Third, I want everybody to take a moment and find your love place. And your love place is anything that you think of that opens your heart and puts a smile on your face. The minute you think about, I go to my dog, my new grandson, uh, Hawaii that I love. So everybody find a love place that just takes you right there. And just drop down into your heart and you know exactly where that is and just wallow in that love. That is what it feels like to get what you want, to have what you want. And that's your job. 
This is specifically what I want. I am creating this. I feel love all around it. Now, universe, come on and create it with me. And it, you will see, is miraculous. The creative ways the universe comes up with scenarios that bring you your heart's desire. Excellent. So talk about that. What are the cornerstones about timing and receiving? I don't think there are any, unless you believe there are. Hmm. If everybody can get from this show that the rule that drives everything is as you believe, it's delivered to you, baby. As you believe, that's the way your life will show up. So our job, I love how my channel says it is, don't wait, create. You're not waiting for signs from the gods or the angels or God. You are here to practice free will. And you must accept the responsibility to do that. And yes, that means the power of the God that you are. Nobody can think a thought for you. Nobody can feel a feeling for you. Nobody can hold a belief for you that you don't choose. That makes us the gods and creators of ourselves on this plane. So the more consciously you choose what you think, what you feel, and what you believe and match it with love, the quicker and more fully it manifests for you. Mm. Yeah, this I love this conversation about free will because it it comes up a lot in what I talk about. And for me, it's in respect to who we are here on earth, what happened to our history, uh, some of the interference from extraterrestrial beings, which should not have happened because we are a planet of free will. And so protocol always says they never interfere, period, never interfere with one exception, and that is nuclear. If anyone's going to press a button, yes, then they are there in full force and they disengage the nuclear missile and it's over. So that's great. They've done it before and I thank them for it. But free will is very, very important. And I emphasize it was a gift. It was a soul choice that we had here on this planet as humans. And we should um, flesh that out. We should experience this gift. Talk deep, more deeply about free will. How does that play oh. into this? And why is it so important? Well, because you can't create without it. Creation on this plane, conscious creation on this plane does not happen without you exercising your free will. And what we all are taught to do is to blame our stories for why we can't. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a very, very poor family. My father was a severe alcoholic who tried to commit suicide in my bed. Freud would have a ball with that one. Ended up shooting himself through the head behind a bar. Now, that's my story. I can keep limiting myself with my story. Or I can go, okay, what are the things I learned from that story that I don't want to keep creating? So that I can focus on health, wellness, balance in my life, my own personal power that I get to create me with, choosing men that I don't have to take care of because that's what was modeled in front of me. And I think that's really important for everybody to understand. Our self-esteem, how we see ourselves in the world, how we see the world seeing us, totally locked in by eight 
years old. So whatever you are verbally taught from conception to weight or whatever was modeled in front of you, your childhood brain goes, yeah, that's the way it is. That's the rule. Those are, that's the way life is until you become conscious that the only way life is, is the way you choose to create it. So you can either own your family's stories and their limitations. My mother was brought up Southern Baptist. I couldn't even tell my grandmother that I went to dance classes. So what does that say to an undeveloped brain? Oh, I'm being judged for doing what I love. Do you know in one hour, one hour of watching TV, you can get up to 50 messages of how you're going to get sick, what disease you probably already have, and what pill to take that might kill you anyway. <laughs> While you are watching Happy Families with Dogs. <laughs> So your That's brain so goes, oh, I get it. Being sick equals happy. Mm. And welcome to one of the most advanced sick countries in the world now. And so what did you do, Dee? I mean, that's quite something. That's a quite a backstory and a real story for you. You could have ended up many different ways, but here you are. So my first question is, what did you do to heal? Because it sounds like there's trauma, obviously there's trauma in there for you as a child coming up, but there's also ancestral lineage tra uh, trauma in there. What kind of healing modalities did you do? How did you take this on? The first thing I read was the I Am Discourses by St. Germain. So a lot of my work and my early work was based on the I am principle. God said, I am that I am. If I'm going to be God, I have to define myself as God. So I had kind of a dichotomy in my life. My mother was a beautiful actress in community theater. My grandmother was a phenomenal artist um, and one of the matriarchs of our church. My older brother was a minister for a while. And I was just driven to always understand the highest truth. And what I learned, Debbie, is that religion, spirituality, and brain science are all saying the same thing. Different words, same thing. The good book says, think only on these things, love, joy, peace, right? Brain science says, whatever you focus on, you create more of. So... When you break down the simplicity of those things, basically what they're saying is if you think on the positive, you get the positive. If you think on the negative, you get the negative. Well, I didn't want the negative. I'd had it up to here with the negative growing up, right? And so I really became conscious around my mid to late 20s, I really became conscious that it was up to me and that I had to decide what I wanted to do. So I, I taught a year of high school and I thought, if I don't get out of here, I ain't ever going to get out of here. So I said, I'm going to go to New York and be an actress. Every single person other than my mom in my life 
are you crazy? Nobody knows who you are. You don't know who anybody is. Right. You're going to, do you know? I said, thank you very much. God and I have a different plan. I'm off to see the wizard. So in less than seven years, I start in ET. Unheard of. It really is. But every time somebody wanted to give me their limitations, mm -hmm. I said, no, what do you want, Dee? What do you want? What excites you? What fills you with love? What do you want? And same thing happened when I decided to have a baby. Six specialists told me I would never have a baby. I said, thank you very much. God and I have a different plan. What do you want, Dee? I knew I wanted a little girl. I saw her. I cut out a picture that looked just like her. Now, I knew and committed whatever I had to do, I was going to make that baby. So as fate had it, I got a film that shot in Australia. And Australia is one of the centers in the world um, that help people get pregnant. Hmm. I didn't so know. So my handler there, she and I snuck off one day to see a doctor who did a test who found out that I had one of the largest fibroids in history. Oh my gosh. That six specialists here couldn't find. So that led me to work with acupuncture, mm -hmm. which taught me a lot more about energy and directing energy. And six years later, I had my beautiful daughter. She's just brought me my first grandson. But you see, if I had believed in everybody else instead of had faith in what I knew within me, wouldn't have happened. And I want to talk a little bit about directing energy because people don't really understand that. Yeah, creation energy directed into physical manifestation. I think yes. that's fascinating. Yes. Um, all energy is neutral. Let's start there. There's no good and no bad energy. Mm -hmm. Energy is neutral. You learned that in fifth grade, guys, science. Energy must be directed or it will take its direction from anything that gets its attention. Commercials on TV, social media, God forbid, your old religious trainings like they're the rich people, we're the good people. Childhood fears. So the more you consciously say, this is the thought that matches what I want, this is the belief that matches what I want. This is the feeling of love that matches what I want. The quicker and easier you manifest. And it's easy, guys. I don't know why so many people teaching this want to make it so difficult. Sometimes when I go out and speak, Debbie, I go, you know, God created the world in seven days. How hard could it be? <laughs> right? <laughs> So, I so let me ask you a question, because like, as you're saying this, D, I'm getting this aha and I'm having this vision of being a laser beam because yeah. you're not giving a lot of chance and wishy-washy. It's like, oh yeah, really yeah. clear and on purpose with yeah whatever it is we want to manifest. If you're not getting what you want in your life, mm -hmm. sit down and write out everything you were taught or modeled when you were a little boy or girl. You will see clearly the beliefs and the teachings that are making you continually hit that wall. Mm -hmm. 
And what about, so I love this. You're a ballet dancer when you're young, despite your grandmother's judgment or anybody's judgment, and you still go out to mindfully create your acting career and you're still creating, obviously, at a really high level. Uh, What about, does this have anything to do with alien life? And I guess the big question is, I know you did Extraterrestrial, the E.T., the amazing movie. This was a reference point movie, one of the very few movies still out there that showed an extraterrestrial life force being as being benevolent, which is so important. Yes. Do you have any experience in this area? Do you have personal experience seeing spacecraft, UFOs? No, I don't. None at all. No, I don't. And yet in my channeling, um, you know, I just did contact in the desert. So I channeled the highest truths. Ah. around the aliens to share with everyone. Wow. I have to tell you, I've never known my channel to be wrong. Um, That they are here. They are benevolent. They are here to guide us. And they cannot interfere with our free will. So Mr. Spielberg really got it right. And if you watch the movie and break down the simplicity of it, E.T. knew what he wanted. He wanted to get home. He kept his heart light on and kept his heart open and lived in love. He allowed the universe through the children to help him manifest his dream. And then he trusted I love that. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's by any chance or mistake or accident that I got that film. Do you know I didn't even audition for E.T.? How is that possible? You were so young. How did they know you? I, I was practicing at the time a philosophy called conceptology. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. It was developed in the 30s. My husband at the time was somewhat involved in it. So we would go down once a week to Anaheim to study with this teacher. And so I said, all right, I'm going to take the summer. I'm going to write down, which my channel is very big on, every single thing I want to create in a getting a big movie and doing a big movie. And I would read it once a day and I would just go, oh my God, I can feel how awesome that is and how happy I'm going to be. And it, I'm creating it right now. Within me, it's done. And a year before I had auditioned for a film called Used Cars for Mr. Spielberg, which... I say tongue in cheek, fortunately, I did not get. Because when E.T. came along, he knew he wanted everyone to be very childlike Mm. in that film. And I had that quality. And so they just called and offered it to me, which pretty unheard of in my business you're nobody, and in seven years, you're in the biggest blockbuster of all time at the time. Wow. But you see, there was nothing in me that didn't think that was possible. (laughs) And I, I think that's the way we abandon ourselves the most, is by putting any kind of limitations on us. But then years ago, the popes and the kings got together and they said, well, we we can't tell them how powerful they really are. How will we get all the money in the land? And so for Eve, you know, as soon as she picked that damn apple, we've been paying for it ever since. Right. And I'm saying, no more. Thanks for sharing. What do I want to create? Mm-hmm. I... Every day in my 
directions. Some people call it meditation. I direct energy and I say I am all injustice brought to justice now. I am the United States of America, love and peace, joy and communication, unity, integrity, truthfulness, honor and clarity. I am the United States of America who loves herself. Because if we don't create that within ourselves, we do not create it in the world. When the majority of energy comes together in unison, when the majority come together in their knowing, all energy then can manifest positively. What was the toughest thing that has happened to you <laughs> on your journey? The thing that was the hardest hurdle for you to get through, over, exist with? Um, it seems logical for me to say both the suicides in my family, but really, when you ask that question, someone in the business hurt me a lot. And um, kind of damaged my career for years. And it was the greatest lesson for me, Debbie. They weren't gonna change. They weren't gonna change what happened. The only person that could change it was me. And you see, we don't forgive for others. We forgive for ourselves so that we can be free of that hate and of the victimness. Again, anything that you allow to make yourself a victim will not serve you in the creation of your life. It sounds tough. No, it, sounds, it sounds tough, you know, um, and that it is, isn't, it isn't a, tough. Yeah. It's a decision. It's literally a decision in every moment of staying conscious to love yourself so much that you don't do anything that doesn't allow you to love yourself more. And the more hate and the more judgment that I hold, the more I go down from my own joyful creation. And I won't do it anymore. Right. Without a doubt, we lower our own vibration. I agree with you 100%. And what I meant was it must have been difficult because it sounds like betrayal. And I know in my life, it is betrayal. when I've been betrayed, that is the toughest pill for me. That is always a blind side. And that, I agree, it's a, it's a road. I have a Scorpio moon. And that makes it, and also a cancer sun, very sensitive. And so, and I'm very loyal. So when that happens, it, it takes me a minute and it takes me an hour, like a longer time to get to the forgiveness. And I agree with you. It's like yeah. to carry around that resentment and that anger and all of what comes through it, that vitriol, it's a terrible sack and weight that we bear. Yeah, uh, and they moved on with their lives. It, yeah, absolutely. They really don't care. Never did. But we abandon ourselves and our creation by holding on to it. So again, nobody can think a thought, feel a feeling, or hold a belief for you, which makes you the God of you. So if you abandon yourself, the God of you has to abandon yourself also until you wake up. Yeah, that's beautiful. Is, is there an exercise, D, that you have that you can share with us so we can actively direct our day? I think that's a beautiful thing to do, to have intention yeah. every day. Yeah, I don't get out of bed and I don't go to sleep 
without directing my energy. So one of the first things I would add to your list when you wake up in the morning is today I know and I am clear. Because if you go into doubt about yourself and your knowing, you're out of creation. If you go into reaction in any way, you're out of creation. I know and I am clear. Today, I am health and wellness and vitality. Today, I am money flow and success through divine love. Today, I am peace and joy in this world. And my favorite, today my intention is to be love and to send love out to everyone and everything and to magnetize love back to me in every way. And I swear, Debbie, it's magical. It's magical how it how it happens. I was just offered two movies, two beautiful, fabulous movies, and I wanted to do them both, and they overlapped in the schedules. And I said, okay, my intention, my direction is that I do both these films because I can feel the joy in them. So I don't know how you're going to do it. Not my job. Work it out. I'm doing both. Do you know it took three days? And in three days, some other actor in one of the movies got another job. So they had to change the schedule. So all the dates worked out. I couldn't have figured that out. I didn't know who the other actors were, what their schedules were, but the universe, when you're clear and you direct it, it's science that energy has to follow direction. Hmm. Yes. Mm. So it's, it's you know, like if you want to make ice, you can't put mud in the ice tray. Well, you can't put shit in your head either. You can't put shit in your thoughts, in your feelings. No, pure water. And you put it in the ice tray and you put it in the refrigerator and you've got ice for your scotch. And that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. And amen. <clears throat> that's great. That is so great. First of all, when you, I, I took some notes because when you were doing <clears throat> today, I know, and I am clear today, I am money flowing through divine love today. I am peace today. I'm health. I mean, I had goosebumps while you were now saying you that can feel it, you, you can feel yeah. the potency of that and all things lifting at the same time. That is a beautiful practice. And, and I that, love that you, this clarity you're talking about that creates for you. And even like, I actually want both of these. I'm not going to settle and say one or the other. I'm yummy for both of these. <clears throat> it yeah. also follows, you know, for those out there who listen to Bashar, Daryl Anka, who channels Bashar, Bashar always says, follow your excitement. Forget about the how. Yes. yes. Forget about the details. The rest will take care of itself, but follow your excitement and things happen. <laughs> they just, the universe is built on that principle for things to come into being, for particles to form, for what you're asking for, believing in, allowing, receiving in your life. Yeah, allowing is a big thing. Allowing all the magic to happen. You know, <laughs> I wrote an e-blast a couple of weeks ago. I stopped by unexpectedly to see my grandson. And let me tell you, you don't get in between my grandson and his food. <laughs> okay. So I walked in and he was eating and he went, oh, oh no, there's food. <laughs> oh, grandma. Oh, no, there's food. This 
And I went over to him and I said, Stone, you go ahead and finish eating because grandma's here and I'm going to wait and you can have it all. Mm. You can have it all. And that's what I want us all to know. You know, we can have it all. God said, I want to give you all the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Not if you're good, not if you're humble, not if you're poor, not if you struggle, not if you work really, 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 really hard like I was taught. Right? Just want to give it to you. Do you want it? Will you allow me to give it to you? Right? My daughter has always made fun of adults going out to dinner. Oh no, I'm gonna get it. No, you got it last time. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the bill. Please let me get the bill. She said, Mom, when I grow up, I'm gonna let everybody else pay for it when they want it. <laughs> but isn't that what we're taught to do? Oh no. I don't really want you to pay for my dinner. I really do. And I'd kind of like to pay for you. You know, we're just taught to give ourselves up, Debbie. We're taught to give ourselves up, to struggle, to work hard, to doubt, to worry. You know, I saw on a television show a few months ago and I thought, this is unbelievable. It's getting out to the mainstream. The lead character said, yeah, but I'm just so worried. And her boss looked at her and said, worry's a negative prayer, you know. It knocked me all the way back on the sofa. Worry is a negative. You are literally praying for what you don't want because your brain thinks in pictures. And when you say, I don't want that, or I hope that doesn't happen, your brain sees it happening. So those of you out there that might be challenged with a dis-ease right now, focus on health. Mm -hmm. Focus on the love of health. While you take whatever steps you have to take, you do the job of loving health instead of trying to get rid of the disease because then your brain sees you with it. Oh my goodness. So yes, I, um, there's no way without it just saying it out loud. So I, and the re only reason I'm hesitating is people in my audience are very loving and caring. And then they like to write me ways I can heal. And I appreciate that, but it's not necessary because I'm super connected with some great healers. So the deal is I I have been dealing with um, arthritis. And every time I went to the doctor to take care of one area of my body, he would say, we really need to do x-rays, Debbie, because I know we looked at the right knee, but you know we look, should look at both knees. So what happened? <laughs> he found now arthritis in both knees and this place and that place. And by the last time I saw him, I was so depressed. So, yeah, I bet. <clears throat> I was so angry with my body. Like, how is it that I'm here and there's so much for me to do and there's so much popping in my life and then there's this massive limitation? So, would you like? Me I'll just finish the story and then take. Okay, I'm sorry because I'm, I'm yours. Um, because I'm I I concur with what you say. You know, I went dark and it was really a not place, good place to be. Yeah. And I woke up the next day and I just thought, and really very lovingly to myself. And I thought, you know, Debbie, you can't hate yourself. Well, you have to, <laughs> love, right. You have to love yourself. Well, and it's kind of like the other analogy is people who are overweight and they just hate their bodies. You can't hate yourself thin. You have to find a way to love yourself thin, love yourself well. So I woke up with that and I thought, wow, I haven't tried that one before. So every night when I went to sleep, I would send love to every part of my body, even like, I love you, arthritis. I love you. Like whatever your purpose is or whatever you're acting out here or whatever, you know, or if you stay, no attachment. I love you. I love you. I love your body for being so strong and I went through everything and saw golden white light pouring through me. 
let me tell you what a difference, what a difference a day makes. Night and day. Yeah. Right. So one was really like on top of everything else, just woof, sad sack, not good. And I wasn't going to attract and good fear. from that place. And the other was so light and had possibilities and was full of kindness yeah. for myself because it already sucks enough to have any kind of dis-ease. And if on top of it, you're being mean to yourself, that's really not a great place to be coming from. So yeah, I turned that around and I am so grateful I got that lesson. Yeah, that's awesome. And you see how simple it was once you made the choice. But we've got to make the choice. Would you be interested in me asking the channel what the energetic cause behind that is? Yeah, that would be sure. amazing. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm working with my pendulum. I'm balanced. I'm switched. We're getting only the highest information, highest knowledge, and highest understanding. Going to this page here. 16, 18. Okay. The first part, are we using the second part at all? When I value myself, I have to abandon myself. And I'm going right to, I believe it's your maternal grandmother. When you were little, how did she teach you? And again, this is an old, old religious belief that if we very, if we really value who we are and the more we're doing this kind of work, Debbie, the more we are claiming and experiencing our value. How did she teach you that when a person values themselves, they have to give themselves up. Mm. Wow. Well, I, I loved my grandmother very much and she loved me very much. She was a big me force too. in my life. And, um, but I did witness some interesting things growing up. Uh, I have to say that sometimes my grandfather sometimes had a not great temper and he would take it out on her. I didn't like seeing it. And she would cow to that, I think, to keep peace because she was sure. actually a very bright, industrious woman. And so that wasn't good because I think she had to give up herself somewhat to get through his treatment occasionally of her. And um, she also, they're saying, gave up what she really wanted to do. She was an incredibly talented woman, as was my grandmother. And in those days, a woman was not encouraged to be, this is what it is, Debbie. Yeah. We're not encouraged to be famous, make a lot of money. You can't be a good mother and a good homekeeper if you're out here being industrious for yourself. And so what happens then is energetically, we're wanting to move ahead in our brilliance and our little girls are going, no, it's not safe. Remember, people don't like you if you do that. Remember, God doesn't like, yeah, but I want, yeah, but it, so that's why it's so, so important to break down these things that you were taught and modeled mm -hmm. because your little child, guys, thinks they're keeping you safe. Because they learned in order to be safe, women had to hold themselves back. Which is really what arthritis is. I can't move. I can't move freely. Mm -hmm. Right? 
in the creation of who I am, I'm stuck. I'm stopped. And the more you work with your little girl and your little boys and go, guys, I love you. I love you, little D. I love you, little Debbie. And I understand why you put this belief together. Will you trust me now to teach you a higher belief mm. so that we can integrate into one and work together to create the freedom and the joy in the life we want? I'm telling you, they will all say yes. Mm -hmm because they want their freedom too. Mm. I'm getting so many downloads. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting so many downloads as you say that, right. about different aspects that are all like funneling and contributing um, to this general subject for me. And I do a morning practice and I am going to include this in my morning practice while I put my feet in the grass and connect with mother earth, the great mother. And Bring this in, bring in. Now, I, I move freely into my freedom. Mm. Yeah. Deep, beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I needed that too. I, I brought that in for both of us. So thank you. Yeah. Honor. So is this what it's like when you do sessions? Tell me more about your gifts and your sessions. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you my sessions are, I can't tell you, Debbie, how many times I hear a week, oh my God, I've been in therapy for 20 years. Nobody got to this. They, It's kind of what we just did with you. We go into the energy. They have to know what they want, right? What do I want to break through? Where am I stopped? What do I want to know? And then the channel just goes right to what it is, who it started with, around what age, and how. It's it's amazing how one belief can affect every single solitary subject in your life. Like, if I hold the belief, they're the rich people, I'm the good people. Mm which is mm. uh, a judgment on having money. Yes. That affects how much money I will allow myself and be comfortable to make or even ask for, which directly affects all my success in my healing and in my acting, which limits the relationships I will not attract very successful people who make money in my life if I'm judging money, which ultimately breaks down my health because I can't do what I want to do. Mm. It's crazy how they explain it all and it all comes together. And in a half hour, and people always say, oh, well, I've got five questions. I know we won't get to all of them. I go, yeah, we will. We will. They just, I, I use that old term, they. Somebody called into my show and said, who do you channel? I said, you know, I don't have a clue. Let's ask. And the answer was all thought and all possibility. And I went, well, to me, that's God. But a lot of people have negative reactions to the word God. Creative force is all thought and all possibility, right? But it's all that that is. And we all have access to tuning in, tapping in, and connecting with that. All the information is right here, but like the good book says, you have to ask to receive. And in the original Hebrew, ask is claim or demand. Yes. This will be delivered to me now. Instead of, oh gosh, if I'm worthy, could I please have? No. And what projects, what things do you have going on 
where can people see you, hear you, find you? Well, I do a live free call-in show every Sunday morning at 9 p.m. You can find how to connect with that on my uh, homepage at IamDWallace.com. I have a fascinating uh, webinar coming up on Alzheimer's and dementia and the energetic causes behind that. My God, the one on politics blew us all out. I, I try and do one a month on a different subject. They're all archived. Everything, everything on my site is affordable um, because I hold the clear intention of serving while I make good money. Mm, nice. So I am dwallace.com. Now I understand the, I mean, the I am made sense, but it's a different level makes sense now. That's yeah, beautiful. It, there's, it's very different from saying I want to I am. Because when you are the frequency of the thing you want, it's done. It's done. Yes. Whatever the you want, the word more. want is lack. If you yeah. look it up in the English direct, direct dictionary. dictionary. So if you're saying yeah. I want X, Y, Z, you're saying I lack having that. So. Yeah. Instead, yeah, I took that out of my vocabulary a long time ago. And trying. Oh my God, my it drives my channel crazy. You don't, you cannot try to get there and be there, guys. That's an oxymoron. You're either there or you're not there. And the more you say, I am there, I am complete, I am creation itself the faster you manifest. Mm. D Wallace, everybody. <laughs> and D, this is Dare to Dream. So what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams or goals? What are you going to create? I am creating um, stage two of my bigger career. And I am creating a balanced, happy, joyful life with my family and my grandson, because that's really important to me. And health, health and wellness, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show and for all that you're doing. This was very- Oh, it's been so much fun, Debbie. Yay. I loved it too, I loved it too. Everybody, I end today's show with this quote from Les Brown. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, your weekly Dare to Dream podcast. Next week on the program, I am featuring Tony Gazi. He channels the praying mantis. And as I end this show, I remind everybody what Dee said that you can do this also in the morning or just right now. Today, I know, and I am clear. Today, I am money flowing through divine love. And remember, worry is a negative prayer. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.